Now the next up is Surya Ganguly. Surya is an assistant professor of applied physics and by courtesy, neurobiology, electrical engineering, and computer science. So Surya. Thanks. Um, great, so the, the human brain is the culmination of 500 million years of vertebrate, evolu of vertebrate brain evolution. And that's actually a really remarkable process because currently we lack any engineering design principles that can explain how a complex sensing, communication, control, and memory network like the brain could scale in size and performance over 500 million years without ever losing function. So we have a lot to learn from the brain. And I'll tell you some uh, work that we've done in creating better AI algorithms inspired by neuroscience and psychology. So one big uh, major difference between artificial networks and, and biological networks is the way that we model the connections or the synapses between pairs of neurons. If you ask a computer scientist, uh, you know, what, what is a synapse connecting two neurons, they'll just say it's a number. It's a, it's a scalar number denoting how strongly one neuron affects another. But the neurobiological reality is that synapses are highly complex molecular machines that, that can have a dynamic memory trace of the entire history of synaptic strength changes that have occurred uh, for a long time. And if you take this capability seriously, you can actually solve interesting fundamental problems in AI. Here are two examples. So for example, one major AI problem is, let's say you want to do learning and memory with low bit rate synaptic communication between uh, neurons, say in a, you know, in a mobile cell phone. Uh, if you actually take into account this internal complexity, we were able to show that you can drastically improve the learning and memory capabilities uh, of these networks. Another major AI problem is the catastrophic forgetting problem. If you train an artificial neural network to learn task A and then learn task B, it'll forget how to do task A. But if you actually intelligently choose internal synaptic dynamics, you can, you can overcome this problem. Let's pop up a level to psychology. It turns out that, there's, that this, there's this remarkable alignment between the way infants learn about the world and the hierarchical structure of our world. So for example, if an infant's learning about the, the domain of living things, at an early age it learns to discriminate, say, animals versus plants. And then it learns to discriminate birds versus fish and trees versus flowers. And it makes finer and finer scale discriminations as it gets older. Now, Jay McClellan and colleagues showed, interestingly, that deep neural networks do exactly this. Here's a low dimensional visualization of the trajectories of the internal representations of a deep neural network as it learns facts about a domain of living things. And you can see that the initial dis discrimination it learns to do is the coarsest one between, birds, uh, between animals and plants. Then it learns distinctions between birds and fish, trees and flowers, and finally the individual items. Okay? So this is kind of astounding. Why is a deep neural network behaving like an infant? Uh, we developed a mathematical theory to explain why this is happening in deep neural networks by discovering new exact solutions to their learning dynamics. This is a plot of the mathematical equations that we found. And you can see that it recapitulates the much more complex neural network simulations. And it provides conceptual insight into how hierarchical structure in the world gradually embeds itself into the synaptic weights of a neural network. We went on to discuss a whole bunch of other topics in psychology and developed a mathematical theory of them. And th by, by developing this theory, this raised an interesting question. Why does learning work at all? Why is learning so smooth in humans? You can think about learning as minimizing an error function over the space of synaptic weights of a neural network. Here's a cartoon picture of an error function. So learning is like a ball rolling downhill on an error landscape. And a critical question is, why don't we get stuck in local minima at very high errors? Well, this geometry that you see in front of you is geometry of a, of a function over two dimensions, a very low dimensional function. And our intuition about geometry in low dimensional spaces is woefully inadequate for thinking about geometry in high dimensional spaces. The error landscapes of deep networks are error landscapes over millions of variables, and the geometry changes completely there. So let's think about that. And we used ideas from statistical physics to think about that. Let's say you have some smooth function over a million variables. And let's say the slope vanishes uh, at some point. What are the chances that the function is a, a local minimum but curves up in all one million dimensions, like that bottom figure? The answer is it's exponentially unlikely, unless you're already near the bottom. Okay? So the implication is that for large neural networks, Local minima at high error are very rare. Instead, you get these saddle points, like the middle picture. There's always a pathway down. 
So the cartoon picture to keep in your head is that the, the error landscape looks like that where there's always a pathway down. And we verified this picture numerically in deep networks, but there's still a problem. The ball rolling down the hill as it rolls down a saddle, it still slows down. That slows down learning. So we developed a better algorithm to speed up the learning around these saddles. And it outperformed existing algorithms. OK, so just to summarize the nature of this interdisciplinary work, we started with the molecular neurobiology of synapses that led to improved learning and memory in AI systems. We also started with infant semantic cognition, which led to a mathematical theory of deep learning dynamics, which in turn led us to think about the statistical physics of the geometry of high dimensional spaces, which led to faster algorithms to descend saddles. So this involves a combination of synthesis of neurobiology, psychology, physics, and mathematics and AI. But more generally, in our quest to try to understand the most complex structure in our known universe, the human brain, and then to improve upon it, we're really going to have to unite a whole bunch of disciplines. And I think HAI stands poised to catalyze this unification across many disciplines as it moves forward along its intertwined quest to both understand biological intelligence and create artificial intelligence. Thanks. <laughs>